Good morning, everyone. Today is the 10th of March, 2018. And I hope you're having a good weekend. Hope you have a good uh, Sunday, whatever your activities are, whether you're worshiping uh, in organized religion or worshiping at home or whatever it is that you're doing, I hope that uh, the good Lord is with you today in a special way. And I hope that he will uh, open our eyes to see what is truly going on around us. Um, we have warned in the Bible that in the last days, perilous times will come men will be lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. So on this 10th of March, uh, Sunday morning, let us uh, think about the realities that we're living in. Good morning, Steve Fisher. I have a book. I don't recommend a lot of books <laughs> because there's so much false teaching out there. But here's one book I highly recommend. And you can get it on, um, you can get this book um, in e-format, e-book format for th like $3.99, I think, from Amazon. I got, this is Bloody Zion, and it's by Edward Henry. Edward Henry, Refuting the Jewish Fables that sustain Israel's war against God and man. Excellent book. Excellent book. Now, I'm not exalting a man, but God does give gifts to certain people. And uh, as far as the um, research that he's done and backing everything up with the authorized King James Version of the Bible, I highly recommend it. Um, I'll give you just a, a brief overview um, of the chapters. Chapter 1, Stripping Sheep's Clothing from a Wolf. 2, Salvation Without Jesus Christ. 3, Who is Abraham's Seed? 4, The True Israel of God. 5, Engrafting. The engrafting of the natural branches. Good morning, uh, Sivan Simamora. Welcome aboard. Dispensational Zionism. Chapter 7, Tim LaHaye, The Left Jesus Behind. Eighth, the fifth column. Ninth is the Trezinous Provocators. Ten is the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. 11, Billy Graham, Zionist, Shill. 12, Freemason, Judaism for Gentiles. 13, Proofs of a Conspiracy. 14, The Love of Money is the Root of All Evil. 14, Zionism is Communism. 16, The Dark Secrets of Judaism. 17, Catholic Judaism. 18, the occult Catholic liturgy. 19, censoring the gospel. 20, Zionist Nazis. 21, the tyranny of Zionism. 22, license to kill. 23, teaching religious myths as science. 24, Jewish media control. And 25, the real reason politicians support Israel. I think this fellow, Edward Henry, is about 15 years ahead of his time in this book. All of the uh, focus on anti-Semitism and supposedly people coming against the Jews, you'll find a different story here. We are not anti-Semites, but we are anti-Zionists. We believe that salvation uh, 
can only be found in Jesus Christ and not in the Talmud or the Kabbalah or not in Judaism or not in oral traditions, but only in Christ. Good morning, Leon Kennedy. So I would highly recommend if you can get your hands on this book, Bloody Zion by Edward Henry, do so and read it. I'm reading it through the second time. A lot of history here, but a lot of good biblical um, foundational backup in this book. Edward Henry has written several books. He's written the Antichrist Gospel, Anti Gospel, which is also another excellent, excellent book. He's written a book called Mystery Babylon and a number of other books that he's written. The Greatest Lie on Earth, he's also written that book. But the bottom line is that all things can be found in Christ. You know, to sum it up, we'll look at that this morning because there are those that are trying to be thieves and robbers and climb up some other way through um, Jewish tradition through uh, the Kabbalah, through the Talmud, rejecting Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Um, but it doesn't matter how much the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing. Jesus Christ is still the Lord. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And we read in the first chapter of Colossians. Um, this is probably one of the most um, phenomenal books in the Bible. Chapter 1 of Colossians. I'm starting with verse 11. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him, Jesus Christ, should all fullness dwell. Having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Well, that is a wonderful, wonderful passage of, of Scripture, you know. And many people deny that all things were made by Jesus Christ. They also deny his preeminence. They deny that he is the Messiah, that he is the only hope of eternal life. And they put their faith in other things, in a lot of lies, the lies of Lucifer, Lucifer, Luciferian doctrine. I will arise and be as God. 
the uh, thing that I have learned in studying the Bible through the Holy Spirit is that when a person gets off focus, you know, off of Jesus Christ and on other things, that is not giving God the preeminence. That is not giving God the preeminence. And we know that it's a gift, that the grace is a gift. And we know that he has chosen us in him before the foundation of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ is that our sins are remitted once and for all by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. If you're one of God's people and you're presently uh, buying into Christian Zionism, or a Jew that practices a, a religion that's based on Babylonian dogma and liturgy, you're commanded by God to come out of that religion. How do you know if you're one of God's people? First of all, you will be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. How is one born again? One is spiritually born again by the grace of God alone through faith in Jesus Christ. You cannot work your way to heaven. Salvation is a gift of God by his grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. What about the commandments of God? They were intended to act as a schoolmaster, the purpose of which was to bring them to faith in Christ. Galatians 3, 24 through 25. Jesus makes clear that all the law and the prophets are summarized in just two commandments. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Matthew 22, 35 through 40. God states that in order to gain entrance into heaven, one must obey and keep all of God's law. Well, how can we keep God's law? <laughs> well, James tells us that if we sin in one point, we're guilty of them all, breaking all the commandments of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. They've all gone out of the way. None that understandeth seeketh after God. They all together become unprofitable. There's none good, no, not one. How can anyone inherit the kingdom of God? If no one is righteous, no one does any good, and God requires perfect righteousness. We can only trust in the righteousness of Jesus Christ through his sacrifice, through his son, Jesus Christ. The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin that will by no means clear the guilty. God's righteousness is perfectly just and merciful. If God is perfectly just, it means that he must punish sin. If God punished the sinner, then no one could enter heaven, since the due punishment for sin is eternal torment and fire. If God simply forgives the sin without punishment, that would be unjust. God resolved the dilemma punishing sin and at the same time forgiving the sinner by coming to earth and living a perfect life and allowing himself to be punished in our place for our sins for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him 2 Corinthians 5 21 
So the Jesus of the Holy Scriptures is a sovereign potentate over all creation. He is Lord. He came to the earth and paid the price for sins so that if you believe in him, all your sins will be forgiven. He punished himself for our sins and forgives us who commit the sin, showing perfect mercy. So if you find yourself believing in Jesus Christ, it's because you've been chosen in him from the foundation of the world and you've been born again by the Spirit of God. And his perfect life will be imputed to you. Well, Jesus is the only way to heaven. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, John 14, 6. Jesus makes it clear that it is all or nothing. He that is not with me is against me. Well, Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. If one tries to add works to faith as a means of salvation, that is evidence that one does not have saving faith. Well, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Well, for the child of grace, we have this great hope, don't we? Our hope is not in this world. Our hope is in eternal life in Jesus Christ. We're looking for a new Jerusalem that city coming down out of God, out of heaven, prepared for the bride. So this morning, be encouraged. Realize Jesus Christ has paid all the price for our sins on Calvary. Jesus paid it all. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, he died my soul to save. My lips will still repeat, Jesus paid it all. So let us be thankful this morning for the great sacrifice that Jesus paid. And don't believe the lies that all the Jews are God's chosen people. Do you realize that's anti-Semitism? in itself to state that to not evangelize the Jews to tell the Jews that they do not need a Messiah like John Hagee is doing is a, is is absolutely anti-semitism the worst about hatred that you can give to anyone is not sharing the gospel with them Jesus Christ came to save sinners. May God be with you today is my prayer. God bless.